Hi guys, thanks for stopping by my channel today. Now, as you can see, I got a brand new printer and it's an Epson EcoTank 15,000. Now, the reason I bought this is number one, I can change it to sublimation and number two, it prints really large. You can print on this up to 13 inches by 19 inches. Okay, I am literally on my tiptoes, so I'm gonna roll my table back down a little bit. Then I'm gonna show you how easy it is to take an EcoTank printer and turn it into a sublimation printer. Now, a company named Hippo sent me two boxes of sublimation ink. And so I want to try these out in this printer. Now, the one box that they sent me has the tops that fit directly into the eco tanks. Then the other box that they sent me is the type that you have to use the syringes. So these bottles, you have to put the syringe in, pull the ink out, and put it into the eco tank. The benefit of this is it is less expensive. But what I'm going to do with it is save it so that when I run out of this ink, I'll put that ink into these bottles and I'll just reuse them. All right, so let's open up this big box. Now, if you've been trying to get one of these eco tank printers and they've been out of stock, what I did was I got up every morning and I checked the Staples online site. I checked a bunch of them, Best Buy, Staples, Office Max or Office Depot, whatever it is now. And one morning Staples was showing that they had this in stock. So I bought it really quickly and I really assumed my order would be canceled within a few days. But I don't know, maybe five or six days later, this showed up on my doorstep. So I took my printer out of the box and I have it sitting up here on my table. It came in this plastic bag, so I just put the plastic bag under it in case any of the ink drips. It's not gonna hurt my table. The other things that came with it were the ink, and we are not gonna use that ink. This is not sublimation ink, and so if you're using your printer for sublimation, you're gonna put these aside. Then it came with a power cord, it came with a disc. I'm not gonna use the disc. I'm gonna download the driver from the internet. It came with a bag in case you need to ship it back. And then here is our start here guide. And then the power cord, we're gonna wait and turn this on here in just a little bit. Now I've seen this done both ways. I've seen people turn it on and then fill the ink. But the way I converted to other printers was I went by the directions in this and it says fill the ink, then turn it on. So the first thing I need to do is remove all the tape from the machine, and then we're ready to fill the tanks. Now there's more tape on both sides, but I can't remove that until I open the lid. On this printer, you have your scanner bed, and then you have a handle on the side to open the whole thing. Once you open the lid all the way, this support piece holds it open. So now I can go ahead and remove all the tape on the inside. Then in addition to tape, there's just one piece of styrofoam. Now I need to lift not just the scanner lid, but the lid that you lift from the sides. Again, this is going to support it. So here's where the ink goes down to. To access those, you just lift this cover backwards. Then you can see there's black, cyan, magenta, and yellow. And of course, it's really important that you pay attention to which color goes in which tank. Now if I open the lid on the black one, you can see there's a little spout or a little opening right here. That's what I'm gonna place my ink onto. So here's my black ink. Now there's two lids. There's one that covers the very top of the ink. And then you have the whole lid that will come off. Now on some inks, there's a little seal right here that you have to remove or puncture. 
but the Hippo ink that I received doesn't have that, so there's nothing to cut through. Okay, so I'm making sure I have black. I'm taking just this top lid off. Then I'm going to put the little hole of the bottle over this little opening right here. Now you do need to kind of press it down so it seats itself in there. And you can actually hear it running into the tank. As it's filling up, you can see the ink level rise right down here. Now I'm going to keep an eye on this just to make sure it doesn't go past the maximum level. Now I can't really see how much ink is left in this, but I'm going to go ahead and take this off. I do want to reserve just a little bit of ink in case my machine runs out and I'm in the middle of a job. I don't have an emergency. So let's go ahead and close that down. Now we'll move on to the cyan. So again, I'm just unscrewing the very top cap, placing the hole over the little spout or the opening, pushing it down onto the stem that's in there is what allows the ink to come out. So it's really not a messy process, but you do need to be careful. Now these tanks are a little smaller than the black, so I'm going to go ahead and remove that. And in this case, there's quite a bit of ink left. Okay, two down, two to go. It's really a quick, easy process, but it is very nerve-wracking the first time you do it. Now see how I can turn it over and no ink comes out? Okay, I can tell I didn't get enough of the magenta in, so I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit more in that one. I saw the stain right here and I thought it was that full, but it really wasn't. Now that I have the ink in these, I can go ahead and cover this back over. Now to close the lid, all I need to do is lift up, take some pressure off this little stand, push back on it. There's some little divots on the side so you can make sure it doesn't fall down hard and then just let it close up. Now at this time, the conversion process is over. And isn't it silly that we call it conversion process or converting a printer when all we're really doing is adding sublimation ink in instead of the ink that came with it. But if you've never added any ink to an Epson EcoTank, it can be a little bit daunting. Now, if you are really looking for guidance on setting yours up, keep watching the rest of the video. I go through the entire setup process. If really you're just interested in seeing the results, then skip to the end. I'll put a title in right here to show you where to skip to. So at this time, I'm gonna go ahead and plug the cord in and power this thing up. It comes with a pretty standard cord. You just plug this in on the back corner and then plug in the other end to your outlet. Now the power button's right here, so I'm gonna turn that on. When I turned it on, it was defaulted to English. Then on the next screen, it says USA, so I'll push on the button again. And I'm pushing on the screen, not a button, but I'm pushing on the selection on the screen. The next screen asks about daylight savings time, and the two options are winter and summer. So I'm going to click on winter. Then it asks for what format you want for your date. So I'm going to go with the standard month, day, year. Then you can either have a 12 hour format or a 24 hour format.
Now it's just kind of going through an internal check. So now the screen's prompting me to see the start here guide and what it tells me to do is hold the question mark down for five seconds. Then after a few seconds you hear a beep and you're ready to keep going. Now the interesting part is the instruction said don't plug it in until you fill the ink and now it's warning me don't squeeze the bottle and make sure the color of your bottle matches the ink that it's telling you to put in. So I'm going to say proceed. The next screen asks me if I want to start initialization and I have to confirm that the tanks are full. So I'm going to click done. What this is going to do is it's going to suck some of the ink into the actual printer. Now it's warning me that this could take 10 minutes and not to turn the power off. Okay, so it's letting me know the initialization is done and to move on to the adjustment. So I'll touch that. Now it's asking me if I want to go ahead and align the printer, and I think I do. So I'll select that option. Then it's asking me if I want to perform a print head nozzle check, and I do. So I'll say print, and then it's prompting me to put some paper in. I usually like to load from the back, so let me go do that. Then when you have paper in and you're ready, you just click on this print. Now I have some little gaps, so I'm going to pick the one that has gaps on it, and it says to hit the X if that's the one you have. So now it's telling me I need to do some print head maintenance. So I'm going to say go ahead and run that. So I'll say run. Now it says this could take about three minutes. Okay, I had only put one piece of paper in and it wants to do a reprint, so let me put some paper in. Then I'll click Next and then I'll let it know I've loaded the paper. Okay, I still have gaps. They're better. Let me show you the first one. See how this one has gaps in almost every line on the right, at least down in the blue. Then this one, the gaps are only in the top two lines of the blue, so it's getting better. But I'm gonna press the X, which means it's still not good. Then I'm gonna do a print head cleaning again. Okay, there's a couple breaks. I'm going to go ahead and move on because I can always go back and do another head cleaning. So now it's prompting me to do an aligning, so I'll do that. And it tells me to make sure I have four sheets of paper in. Okay, it's showing me pictures and it says to pick the one that looks more like this without gaps in it. Now they all look pretty good, but I'm going to go with number three, just like they have in there. So I'm proceeding to number two, or print number two. Now I'm supposed to pick the square with the fewest streaks, so let me look at this. Okay, there's six lines, so I have to enter a number for each one. So it might be hard for you to see, but for number one, square six is the best. Now I'm printing some alignment patterns. So once again, I'm going to look for no gaps between the top line and the bottom line. 
and there's two times you have to do it. So for number one and number two, I'm picking line seven. Now my last print. Okay, so now I'm looking at these rectangles. And you're supposed to show whether the top one overlaps with the bottom one or really there's no gaps in any of these. So this one overline. So this one overlaps, you can tell because that dark line. And it's really hard to tell, but there is a tiny little white gap down here. So I have to choose from one to seven which one I think has the least overlap but no gaps. Hmm. I'm gonna go with number five. Then it's letting me know if I need to adjust again, I can do it from the maintenance screen. For now, I'm just gonna run regular size paper. For my paper type, I'm gonna go with presentation mat. Then let's go back and see what I do next. Okay, I click okay. Now this has a faxing capability. I'm just gonna say set it up later because I don't plan to use that. Then I have to just confirm that decision. And it looks like I'm ready to go. Now I'm gonna check and see if Wi-Fi printing seems to be set up. So I'll click on the little Wi-Fi icon. So I have to choose between Wi-Fi and direct. I'm gonna choose Wi-Fi. And then I'm gonna say start setup and I'm gonna use their Wi-Fi wizard. Right now it's looking for my router. Now let's hope I know our password. My husband's out of town. Uh oh. Now, I'm going to have it remind me later to register this. So I'm just going to do a little test page. I had to add this printer as a printer on my computer. And I just want to make sure my connection's working. And it's printing, so it is. Now I'm gonna do a sample print. It's not gonna be anything earth shattering. I just wanna try it out, make sure everything works well. So I have some Hippo paper. I'll go ahead and load that. Okay, that looks pretty good. You might know that when sublimation prints out, it's pretty dull, but when you add heat to it, it brightens up. I'm gonna go ahead and rip around this image, and then I wanna do my test print, or my test press. All right, look how this did. That looks beautiful. The ink's vibrant, it's very clear. So I'm looking forward to using this more and more. Thanks so much for joining me and sticking it out all the way till the end. Until my next video, bye bye. Then you might want to skip to the end of the video and just see the. <sighs> Now, if you're used to setting up printers, let's see. Now, yeah, let's just go with it.